What's up YouTube? This is Dirk back with another pressure washing video. We're going to test out the DeWalt 18 inch pressure washer surface cleaner. Okay. Looks like this. Pretty nice. Got this at Home Depot. There is a Ryobi model. But this is metal and the Ryobi one is plastic. And you'll see the nozzle right here moves up and down, but it doesn't move side to side. So be careful when you're using it not to uh, tweak it too hard. This housing right here is plastic. But this is a steel deck, which I like. Not to mention the fact that these are super hard bristles. So they do a much better job. Other models I've seen, they have little flaps of rubber, but there's always gaps in them. So stuff is still gonna get through. This has a solid and continuous skirting around it of these really tough bristles. And of course the bottom works with water will be shooting that way. It just spins and spins. So if you go really fast, you're gonna see this pattern on the ground. So in a second here, I'm gonna show you what I'll be using. Let's get to it. All right, a couple days ago, we uh, put a whole bunch of mulch down in our beds. As you can see, this is the normal color of wood. This has all been dyed. And we use this trader quite a lot, and I don't want the uh, charcoal dye that's in this to come up and get all over stuff. So I'm gonna clean this off as well as some of the driveway here. You can see even footprints from my kids that were standing helping in the mulch and they really go all the way down the sidewalk. So I'm not gonna use the surface cleaner for everything right now, but I'm gonna test it out. And we're gonna talk about the differences between using a nozzle for something like this and the surface cleaner for something like the driveway. All right, we're gonna talk about pressure washing 101 just a little bit. <clears throat> I have my hose turned on all the way there at the house. And uh, this is the Northern Tool model. All pressure washers operate on the same premise. This is where the supply in and supply out. You have a pressure knob here. I turn it all the way up. There's a little bleeder valve right here where it comes out of if there's, if you turn the pressure down and it's starting to come out. So we just did the oil change on the pump and the oil change on the motor recently. And before you start it up, it's important. I don't know if you heard that. It's important to go ahead and squeeze the trigger all the way and bleed out all the air that's in the line. It's really, really bad for your pump to uh, basically run with any air in the line. So as you can imagine, all the hose, and of course I have uh, two lines here. It's kind of difficult to hear, but there is quite a bit of air coming out. So with the hose on full blast, we're gonna bleed this out first. While that's bleeding out, talk about the nozzles really quick so the chemical nozzle the black one in the middle automatically makes the reservoir here come out so anything that you put inside the reservoir it'll come out when you're using the chemical nozzle if you use any of the other four or any kind of attachment that doesn't have a big wide opening as you see the chemical nozzle does it won't draw out of that reservoir so that's pretty unique uh, but it's neat so for a big concrete job like this, for a, a driveway that I have concrete cleaner that you can put on first, I would wet the whole driveway first, put on the concrete cleaner, which will let the, uh, just kind of the, all the dirt and crap start to loosen up a little bit so that when you use the surface cleaner, it'll loosen it up a lot more. But for getting all the stain off of my pressure, or off of my uh, trailer here behind me with all the black mulch, I'm gonna start with a 40 degree nozzle because it will still do quite a lot of damage. Okay, the operation on a pressure washer is very simple. You wanna go ahead and click it on. You have a gas supply. Make sure that's on and a choke and a run. I'm gonna put mine uh, on choke just to start it. Of course, uh, make sure your spark plugs and I had mine off for the oil change. Then you have your engine speed. I just started on the rabbit. Let's give it a pull. Let's step on it here. Okay, I have all the air bled out of my system. 
try this with one hand. All right, so something that I uh, had to learn the hard way when I was pressure washing first, these little quick connect nozzles, when you put it in, you really have to make sure it doesn't come back out. I would put it in, but if it's not all the way on, the second you squeeze the trigger, this nozzle is going to go flying. So it's always a good idea. Uh, you can still twist it because, of course, the tip, let me focus here, the tip is, is slotted. So, of course, it's going to go vertical or horizontal depending on how you have it turned. But just give it a good, uh, give it a good pull to make sure it's not going to come out. I have, of course, now if I squeeze it, you can see it's coming out, but you don't hear any of that popping from the air um, still stuck in the lines. So I can run this safely and not worry about my pump. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Run on, on, on. See how it goes. So it's always hard to tell how clean wet wood is, but yeah, you can trust me. You can see the pile of black and uh, all the charcoal soot, essentially, that's been washed off of the trailer. So um, this little, uh, show you this little attachment, it's called Spray Glide. I got this at Northern Tool when I was there buying the pressure washer, but it essentially Velcros uh, I attached both of these Velcro, uh, I guess sleeves, if you will. They're just kind of stuck on there with glue. And then there's a Velcro attachment inside of this. And so you can have the nozzle be all the way to the ground or be way up here. And uh, what it does is I can go as fast as I want back and forth, as you saw, even though it was sped up. But it ensures that the nozzle tip never gets too close which will scour um, this wood you would see an obvious banding it's a little bit uh, you can see it a little bit right here some of these streaks and if this wasn't a trailer and just pressure treated plywood I would care a lot more but my goal was just to clean off all the try to clean off all the black residue as much as I could so that's why I went this way and then I went that way and at the end of the day uh, it's a trailer if this was my driveway I would have uh, put down some kind of cleaner first but as you can see, it um, does a good job of making sure I didn't get too deep. Obviously, as you move your hand back and forth, the nozzle's gonna get further away, closer in the middle, and then further away. So be very careful when you're pressure washing that in the middle of your stroke, you're not 
two inches away from the surface gouging. Let's go ahead and hook up the surface cleaner. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is put down, I'm just going to wet the driveway just to get it wet. And I'm just going to do this one section here so we can try to see a before and after with all the panels around it. And uh, so I'm going to get it wet, uh, apply some concrete cleaner into the uh, cleaning reservoir. And then we're going to use the surface cleaner on top. We'll see what happens. All right. I have some industrial concrete wash that we are going to put in as I mentioned in the reservoir. You don't need a whole lot. Let's see if I can do it without spilling here. Kind of looks like antifreeze, but the, the tank is not that big, so I suggest if you only have a, a small area to do, that you only put a little bit in. All right, and then, I'm gonna take, take this off. back on otherwise they get lost and then I can't use it all right take off the 40 degree nozzle which if you're doing a large large job just keep it in your pocket
easily my new favorite toy. So I was trying to wait for this block to dry so that you could get a real before and after difference, but hopefully you could see just how fast that was. And anybody that has pressure washed knows what I'm talking about. Just holding the nozzle and moving it back and forth would have not only created gouge marks in the driveway, where some areas got a little bit too much attention and others didn't get enough, but it would have taken me a lot longer. You saw my neighbor come over here. Let's get out of the sun and look at it from behind. You saw my neighbor, doesn't really help. You saw my neighbor uh, come over. He's pressure washing right now and we always commiserate about pressure washing tools and tips and tricks. And he was amazed how quickly it was going. I'm gonna do that panel next, but instead of just going this way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way and then also go that way. It's so fast, I think it'll pick up anything left behind. You can see right here, I mean, this is, uh, it's just night and day and how fast it was. I'm still going to, you can see there's a lot of mulch from where I cleaned the trailer off. So we're gonna just clean it off, put the concrete cleaning solution on there so that it has a chance to sit for a second, attach the surface cleaner, and then I'll have my uh, sons. We've got a pretty big job tomorrow to do. If I can get a picture of it, I will. But we will go from there.
Okay, a few quick lessons learned here. We're gonna go take a look at the edge of the driveway where that surface cleaner meets the edge of the grass and the concrete. I wanna show you what it does. And then uh, we're gonna wait for the sun to fully dry both of those panels that I did. One of them, as you saw, only went like this up and back. The other one, I did that, and then I turned directions and went side to side as well for a, I guess, a more checkerboard pattern versus swimming lanes. So uh, I didn't see any of the traditional swirl marks. The underside of that surface cleaner, if you go too fast, will leave the swirl marks as you go. But it, uh, yeah, I went slow enough, and with the uh, concrete wash that I used before, it seemed to actually do really well. So let's go take a look. All right, I know it's hard to see. I'm gonna put my hat down here for full shade. There you go. So it doesn't get right up to the edge. If you're doing a traditional sidewalk with mulch or lava rock or something like that, then obviously there would be enough room for those, uh, the hard bristles on the edge of the surface cleaner to actually get over the lip of that concrete. But the grass here is higher than the concrete. So all that surface cleaner is doing is just ramping right up to the edge. So this tells you it gets pretty close to the edge, but not quite. So <clears throat> all that means is then you go back and put on a traditional nozzle and just, you have one pass right along the edge that you have to do going all the way down. But all things considered, I think that's excellent. Uh, I did not do a very good job either of cleaning out my control joints here all along the driveway these are filled with mud and, and weeds. So honestly, if you wanted to get the 15 degree nozzle or even that zero degree one that I hate so much and tell everybody they should throw away, uh, only use that to clean out the cracks, but honestly, don't, don't use the zero degree. I would get the 15 degree nozzle, clean all your cracks out because it's gonna throw mud everywhere and make a big mess. And then as you wipe off everything, get it dry, put down your concrete cleaner, and as the surface cleaner is going over the edges of the crack, it's not throwing the mud back up on the driveway. So that would, those would be my tips. Clean out your control joints first. And as you can see, the water pools in the lowest spot. So do the lowest spots first, and then you'll be able to uh, go ahead and not have to deal with, fight with the puddles that the surface cleaner is going through. That's why we were push brooming it out of the way, so it would be a more accurate test. All right, a couple of things that I've thought of since uh, kind of putting everything up. One, as I was showing in my oil uh, oil change video on the pressure washer, I took the Teflon tape off of the uh, connection where the power pressure washing hose connects to the pump, and I took it off here on the handle as well. I have two hoses that I've connected together so that I can keep my pressure washer in the shade. I think that's really important. Uh, that the engine and the pump are going to generate a lot of heat and here in north alabama it gets pretty hot in the summer so if you're doing a, a big job and it's just out in the sun running the whole time i think that's going to uh, start to wear on the equipment so i like to park it underneath a tree and i have enough hose i've got a hundred foot of hose before i even have my actual garden hose and i have a hundred foot of that as well so i can really move it 200 feet which on a, on a normal job is, is plenty so keep your pressure washer in the shade um, but when you have that 100 foot of hose out and you have it connected here on the end and you're wrapping the hose up, it's a nightmare. So um, I, I used to think that Teflon tape would actually do something you know, really important, but at the end of the day, I think it's just fine to take it off and I didn't see any leaks. So if you notice leaks or you have a different model, that's fine. Uh, the other thing, let me grab the box. That same neighbor, the same neighbor that you saw come over and talk to me while I was doing the first uh, driveway section came over and borrowed again this is the DeWalt 18 inch pressure washer surface cleaner about 97 bucks at Home Depot he came over and he's using it on his right now otherwise I'd be holding it so uh, I was trying to be a nice neighbor and let him see how awesome it is and that's what it's all about right helping somebody out but Definitely, I am never going to pressure wash a large surface again with just the tip of the nozzle. Stupid. So, um, that is rated for 3,400 PSI. My Northern Tool Power Horse is 3,100 PSI, and his pressure washer is 2,700. I did notice a difference. Uh, mine was a little bit like a hovercraft. When I squeezed the trigger and it was on full throttle, 
Uh, it kind of lifts off, maybe this much, but still it glides along the ground really easily. His, it didn't really glide so much, but it still worked. Um, I don't want to say it didn't work, but uh, so if you have a pressure washer that goes up to 3,400, it's going to work really well. If you might, you might have 3,700 or 4,100, just make sure you turn the pressure down um, as that's only rated for 3,400 PSI. So um, all in all, it was a really good, uh, really good day. And let's go out and take a look at the two driveways and see which one worked best. Okay, so this is the after of the pressure washer, or the uh, trailer. And as you can see, there's still it's still gonna be stained, but I intentionally left this stuff, didn't really get it so you could see, hopefully a before and an after. All right, so that's the trailer. And I think the uh, this driveway panel is still a little bit wet. This one's completely dry. I don't see any swirl marks from the pressure washer, but I do believe, as I step back, I do believe this section's gonna be a little bit better looking than that one because I went both ways on that one. So, all in all, a good day for pressure washing.